Let's take a look at the universal control application when connected to the Studio 192 mobile. So I currently have the universal control launcher open over here. As you can see, I've got two different devices over here. That's because I currently have a Quantum and a Studio 192 mobile connected to my system. Let's go ahead and select the Studio 192 mobile. Now, I want to try to keep this as brief as possible, but I also want to make sure that I outline enough information so that we have a really good understanding of how powerful this interface is and also the basics of using universal control when connected to the Studio 192. Because keep in mind that depending on which interface you have selected, you could potentially have an entirely different GUI for universal control. Go ahead and we'll come back into the main window here. So first off, one thing to note over here is in my preferences, we can get to the system setup or my preferences here by clicking this gear icon. I currently have show ADAT available. So you'll notice here in my actual console, I have all these channels over here that are in aqua blue. These are all of the available ADATs that I have for the system. And of course the Studio 192 mobile has two banks of ADAT. Now, if I was to go ahead and click the show ADAT no option, you'll see that it's much more simplified. So if you're just using it in a very basic function, you can go ahead and hide the ADAT so that it's not overloading you visually and you're looking at less channels. Now, in my case, I'm gonna go ahead and click the yes option. And now we can see we have all of these ADATs available in terms of the inputs. And in addition to that, you'll notice that on this right side over here, we also have ADAT 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 available as outputs. So let's talk about the basics first. Well, anytime you have a channel selected in terms of an input, you'll notice that you have the fat channel parameters for that associated channel on the top here. So we have our gate, we have our compressor, our EQ, and our limiter. And that, of course, is dependent on whichever channel you have selected. Now, in addition to that, we also have some other somewhat hidden options, you might say. So, for example, if I select this channel over here and I click this gear icon, you'll notice that we have some more options. So, one option that we have is this select channel color. So, for example, I could set this to off, but I have this currently selected in a nice green so I can view all of my mic and line inputs. Now, another thing worth mentioning is if we head up to our preferences over here, we have this option down here, colorize channels, which allows us to not only see the color at the very bottom, but we can also see the color throughout the entire channel strip. So if I enable this, now you'll notice that the whole entire channel strip is colored versus just having the colors on the bottom. I'm gonna leave this on for the rest of this video because I happen to like this preference. Now, another thing you'll notice over here is that we have a pre-send versus a post-send. Let's talk about what this means for a second. Well, if we are making some adjustments and we wanted to monitor through the onboard DSP fat channel, but we don't wanna to commit to that, then we would want to make sure that this is set to pre-send. And this is the way that this is set up by default. So all of these channels by default are automatically set to pre-send. But if I wanted to not only monitor the DSP fat channel effects that I've added to this channel, but actually print them, then I could do that. So for example, let's go ahead, I've selected this channel. That means that the fat channel controls we see up top here are directly associated to this channel. Now I could go ahead and activate, for example, this equalizer. Now, you guys are not going to hear this while I'm doing this simply because this is set to pre-send, which means that I'm able to monitor this right now, but it's not recording, meaning we're not rendering or printing that. I'm going to go ahead, just give myself a little bit of a boost here. I'll boost my top end as well, maybe something like this. Now, this is quite aggressive, but if I wanted to actually render this, then I could just go ahead, select the channel, select this little gear icon, and click the post-send option. Now that I've clicked the post send, you'll be able to hear those adjustments I've made to the EQ. And if I take this and bring it down a bit, that'll come down. If I engage this compressor and I bring down my threshold, so I'm doing a lot of compression, and for example, bring up some makeup gain over here. If it's in post send, you'll hear this. If it's in pre send, you will not. We'll go ahead, I'm gonna come back to this channel and just disable this fat channel so my voiceover sounds a little bit more regular. Now that's the DSP 
fat channel. And on the Studio 192 mobile, we have a DSP fat channel for all of our mic line inputs. And then we also have a fat channel processing for eight at bank one, one through eight. So you can see here is one. And if I go to eight, we still have a fat channel. But if I click eight at nine, which would be bank two, we don't have any fat channel processing. So that's important to note just in terms of where the processing lies. The other thing that we can do in addition to having the fat channel processing is we have access to some effects. So let's just go ahead just for a moment here. I'm going to just turn off my ADAT view and you can see we have effects A and we have effects B. Now, if I click this effects tab, we can see that effects A is a reverb and effects B is a delay. Now the idea here is that if you're using universal control for your monitoring and your artist wants either some reverb, a little bit of ambience, and maybe a little bit of delay, that we can do this directly within our universal control application. So for example, if I select this main mix over here and I click effects A, you can see now that we have a send fader for effects A. We also have a send fader for effects B. Now, just to mention over here quickly, I currently have effects A and effects B muted simply because it's a little distracting for a voiceover. But the idea is simple. We can click this effects A tab. I could dial up some reverb. We could click this effects B tab. I could dial up some delay. And now based on the mix that we're listening to, I have my reverb send and my delay send. And keep in mind that we also have our returns. Now, while we're on the subject of creating mixes, Let's talk a little bit about the way the system works. I'm just going to go back and re-instantiate my ADATs so they're visible again. So when you're working with the universal control application, the way that this works is you have all these different mixes. So essentially each one of these tabs represents a completely different mix. So I'm currently listening to the main mix. These faders that are brought up here for this mix are the main mix. And this is what's routed to my main outs on the Studio 192 mobile. Then we have a mix one, two. You can see that's a slightly different mix. These are routed to the line outs one and two. Then we have a mix three, four, and these will be routed to the line outs three and four. And then in addition to that, we also have four outputs in terms of our ADAT. So we have these four different mixes as well. Now it's worth mentioning that if you really wanted to take advantage of all of these different mixes, that you would have to make sure that these outputs are connected to a headphone amplifier of some sort. Now, in terms of putting together mixes really quickly, we have a couple options. So for example, I could take my mains over here. Let's say I like this mix. I could copy this mix and then I could say, hop into my mix three, four, and then I could paste this mix that I have from my mains. So we'll go ahead and we'll paste this mix. Or I could come into mix one and two, and let's say that I wanted to copy this mix, and I could come into three, four, and I could paste this mix as well. So very easy to copy and paste different mixes. Let's just quickly take our main mix, copy it, and let's paste it back to our mix one and two, which as we know is our analog lineouts one and two. Now, in addition to having all of these different mixes that we can manage, let's briefly talk about the headphone routing. So if we click either this fader over here, or if you have this one visible on this side, this one here, you'll notice that we have access to the headphone source. And here we have two different sources. We have headphone Q and headphone primary. And then we have a Q button. So essentially, we're going to get into this in detail in a later video. But what the Studio 192 mobile allows you to do is because we only have one built-in headphone out on the Studio 192 mobile, we can activate this Q button to toggle between two completely different mixes. So very handy. And like I said, we'll get into detail with this in a later video. I want to take a look at these functions over here in terms of our monitoring functions. So if we head to the top left of our console and we click this option, as long as we have our show audio device controls visible, we have all these different options that become available to us in terms of monitoring. And it's worth mentioning that these are bi-directional between Studio 192 and Universal Control. So for example, if I was to activate my talkback, that would activate my talkback in Universal Control. Now also with respect to assigning the talkback targets, we could also do the same. So for example, here is my talk assign, and currently all of my outputs are assigned 
so that anytime I engage talkback, they're going to go to all my outputs. If I go into Studio One and hover over this outbound arrow, talkback targets, you can see the same ones are all enabled. If I wanted to make some adjustments to these, I could easily do that. So for example, let's take the mains off and let's take the last three ADATs off. So we've just essentially deselected some of these options. Now, if we come back into universal control, you'll see that that's updated in terms of universal control. So that's bi-directional. Now, in addition to that, we also have mono and we also have main dims. And then we also have a mute, which we can activate. For example, just by clicking here, I've activated the mute. And like you see, anything that happens in Studio One is also happening in Universal Control. This is all bi-directional, so very handy indeed. Now, while we're on the topic of the talkback, let's take a second to look at how this works. We've looked at the talk assign, which allows us to designate our talkback destinations in terms of which outputs will get the talkback mic. But now let's take a look at how to assign the talkback mic's source. So for example, in Universal Control, we can click this gear icon, and here we can select a talkback source. Now, because of the way the system is set up, we have two choices. We have the input one or input two. And it's worth mentioning that in addition to being able to select this through Universal Control, we can also select this through Studio One. So we can choose which talkback mic is chosen. Now, one thing worth mentioning over here is that if we choose a talkback mic. So for example, if I was to choose my input one as my talkback mic in Universal Control, you can see that it's updated in Studio One. And in addition to that, it's also no longer available as a choice in Universal Control. So it's been removed from the GUI in terms of doing any routing. Now, if we wanted to get that back, quite simply, we could just select none and we would have this back. Now, while we're on this topic of staying organized and understanding this system even better, let's take another look at this gear icon when we have an input track selected. You'll notice that we have these different categories over here. I can select all or I can select these individual categories. So for example, anything to do with vocals, I have all these icons over here. If I wanted to change the icon associated with the input channel, I can just select one of these and I can very quickly choose an icon. So for example, let's choose input four, and let's say that I wanted this to be vocals. Let's say that I was recording a group of people. If you don't like any of these icons that you've added, we can just simply select that X to get rid of them. Now, in addition to that, I can also make some changes to my actual names of my track. So for example, anytime we select a track, we can't double click from this section, but if we select this track and we have this gear icon selected, then I can actually rename an input. So for example, I could change this to VO mic. Now I've just renamed this in the universal control application. So if you're working with actual artists where you knew their name, you could say not only bass guitar, but you could give the actual name of the person or the artist who's performing. So very, very useful. And last but not least, I want to take a look at loading presets in terms of working with some presets that are available. If we click this little menu with these three lines over here, we can automatically just enter this menu system, which allows us to essentially work with presets. So we have some vocal presets. So just so we can kind of hear what's happening, let's go ahead and set this to post send, meaning that any changes I make on my fat channel will actually be rendered. And because I'm recording this voiceover, they will actually be passed through and be printed and rendered into the audio signal. So for example, now I could go ahead and choose between all these different categories, and then I could essentially choose a preset that I might wanna try. So for example, let's try mail two out. I can select this, I can addition this. Now you're listening to my voice in a different preset. I could go to mail one, we could try a different preset. We'll try this. All you have to do is addition these different presets. We'll try speech one. Maybe we'll try speech two. And if I don't like what it's done, I can simply go ahead and reset this and then we can actually exit that preset. And of course you can copy different presets. For example, I could copy this and then I could simply come into a different channel. For example, eight at one, and then I could paste this 
So this essentially allows you to load different presets, addition different presets, and of course we could create our own and we could store them and recall them at a later time. So just to recap, we have a basic mixer which allows us to monitor multiple low latency mixes based upon these different tabs that we've selected. We can adjust our headphone routing simply by clicking the mains. And in addition to that, we have some extra functionality in terms of clicking this gear icon on a track so we can do things like color. We can set our effects to be either pre-send or post-send. So if we need to render or print the DSP fat channel effects that we have on the current input channel, we can do that. We can also select these different icons. We also have the built-in effects. We have an effects A and effects B. We can access the effects simply by selecting a mix and then clicking the effects A or effects B tab. And it's very easy for us to manage. So a very powerful software, low latency monitoring application that allows us to take advantage of the inbuilt DSP with a wide range of different monitoring applications. Thank you.